Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to another Maestro Game production, and it is time to go back and face the treacherous man that is Jared Bowen. As you can see, Bowen is excited ahead of Tomlinson reunion. Sky Sports News turned their attention to London Stadium as West Ham United's traitor Jared Bowen prepares to face his former club, Hull City, in the English Premier Division. There is Known to be a lot of mutual respect between the inverted winger and manager Tomlinson. Well, it was until it decided to go to West Ham, which goes back to when the Tigers boss took over at the club. Bowen has stood out at times for West Ham this season, completing 21 crosses, 32 dribbles in 9 appearances. So he's apparently having a decent season. Obviously, he would have had a much better one if he remained at our club. But that is his problem. Now it is time to catch up on a couple of results and we had the break at a good time. These are probably two of the most boring games I could have possibly skipped over. So you're quite lucky in that respect. So as you can see, first of all, we went and drew our game against Dynamo Kiev. So nice, simple, nil-nil draw. And that means in the group we stay top on five points they are also on five points celtics on four and copenhagen ya yeah, is pretty much out of the running of course mathematically they're not quite out yet but they are quite a bit behind the three of us so it's very much free horse race for the two spots we then went and played against southampton now we picked up a comfortable one nil win i really wish it wasn't on television because i'm sorry for everyone who watched that on tv apparently so we got a goal in the 34th minute through a penalty. Their guy decided to get himself sent off towards the end of the first half. And then we had the most boring second half you could possibly imagine. Practically nothing happened. So yeah, we just eased through that one. And we are now at today's games. So without further ado, let's go ahead to the London Stadium. Thank you, ladies and gents. Welcome to London Stadium. And you've guessed it. It is, of course, here in London. And I hope all of you have brought your binoculars because the pitch behind me is quite far away for you to see from. But without further ado, let's head on down to pitch side and get this game going. OK, everyone, it is finally kickoff time here at the London Stadium and we are looking to level out our results against West Ham. So they have two wins against us so far. We have one draw and we have one victory over them. And our team is very much an unchanged lineup. So we're going with Butland in goal. Selic, Katic, Pavlovic and Lorenzo at the back. Dragomir and Palacios in central midfield. Musa on the left. Mora on the right. Gaetano in central attacking mid. And of course David up front. Pereira, Burke, Guimeres, Navarro, Mahi, Ajiria and Iwan Yeet make up our bench. Now, of course, they have Jared Bowen starting. So he is the man to watch out for from them. They also have Declan Rice and Anderson, who also can be rather fretful. But we are most concerned about Jared Bowen, of course. They did acquire him for quite a bit of money from us. But Carlos thinks we should tell the team they're expected to prove a point. Yes, they are. They're expected to prove a point that we're a much better team than West Ham and that Jared Bowen shouldn't have left us to go join them. So assertively, I'm expecting a win today, boys. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. The only person that has motivated is Musa. Great. Everyone else seems to be listening keenly. So, Georgia Pope of BBC Radio Humberside. The devious young lady who we have a great respect for. Jared Bowen has provided plenty of assists in the Premier League so far. Do you have plans to stop him? Yes, I'm going to bribe him. He's a fine player, but we have fine players too. I'm confident in their abilities. Jack Butland has really caught the eye in recent games. Okay, we certainly hope he can keep it going. How much of a boost is his absence? Any team would miss him, but it won't affect the outcome. We are going to beat them regardless. They could have De Gea in goal, and we would still score 12. Okay, maybe we won't score 12 goals. But, you get the point. We are going to come here, and we shall pick up a victory. I believe. And if I believe, it shall happen. Because that's how the universe works. 
I'm not quite sure that is how the universe works. But Pizarro whips one in. Kata gets it down. Musa, Musa, nice clearance. Gets it down our left-hand flank. And it is to no one. O'Connell has now picked it up for West Ham. And West Ham are coming back on the attack. And it's coming down this right-hand side with Jared Bowen. He's made a lovely run inside. Come past our defence. And it's a great save by Butland. Come on, Jackie. Jackie Butland making the save. Selick, long throw to Musa. Musa back to Selick. Selick, of course, has been training his long throws. Selick, nice ball in. O'Connell heads it away and Anderson gets it down. It is with Haller. Haller is holding up the ball. Can Palacios get a tackle in? No, he goes past him and it's through to Fornals and it's lovely save by Butland. Finally cleared by Pablo so we have West Ham with the corner. Jared Bone, of course, taking the corners for them. That is a sensible decision. He is rather good with free kicks, corners, and pretty much any set piece you'd like to place him on. That is the biggest downside of not having him, really. Is we did have a little bit of a step back in terms of the quality of our set pieces. But Bowen with another corner for West Ham whips it in. Declan Rice, it scrambled over the line. Looks like we are going positive, folks. And we are going to tell the lads to show some passion as soon as it allows. So, Skip, show some passion. We want the fruit. Get your passion fruits out, lads. We have ten minutes. I don't know why I want to say five, but we have roughly ten minutes. Now we have about five minutes. Dragomir whips one in, headed away. Katik has collected the ball, plays it to Dragomir, back to Katik. Katik, nice ball across the field to Musa. Musa, oh, Musa. That would have been a lovely goal. We are going to go attacking for these final few minutes of the half. Can we get another shout in? Yes, we can. Demand a bit more. Katik with a free kick in a rather precarious place. Plays it to Selick. Selick, nice ball over the top. O'Connell intercepts it. Falls down to Musa though. Musa tries another one over the top. O'Connell once more gets it to Fornal. Dispossessed by Musa though. Come on, Musa. Having a lovely game so far. Dispossessed by Declan Rice though. Declan Rice plays it back. And it is West Ham in possession with Gamblin. Gamblin almost gives it away. Pizarro back to Gamblin. Gamblin on this right-hand side. Plays it back to Pizarro. Pizarro to Uk. O'Connell, yes, O'Connell, not O'Connell, O'Connell. Jared Bowen now, cutting inside. We need to stop letting Jared do these cutting runs. He is rather threatening when he cuts inside like that. And we need to watch out for it. But Jared Bowen, once again, with a corner, whips it in. It's headed away, though. Pizarro collects, and it's played back across to Matt Vinko. Woba, Woba on the halfway line, plays up to Pizarro. Pizarro back to Woba, back to Matvienko. Matvienko and to Pizarro once more. Fornals through to Halia. Halia holds it up. Anderson, Anderson one on one with Butland. Come on, Butland. Good job. Tighten the angle and he misses the goal. So we are currently 1 0 down here at West Ham. They've had 14 shots, we've had three. None on target, we've had zero. Seven fouls to our six, zero yellow cards to zero yellow cards. 58% possession to our 42. Their best performer has been Declan Rice. He's got a 7.2 rating and 93% passing completion ratio. Our best performer has been Jackie Butland, with his nine shots saved and a 7.1. Now struggling to perform is Fornals with a 6.5 for them and no reason for it. And Selick with a 6.4 and 0% crossing completion ratio. Current latest scores around the league are Aston Villa 1, Bournemouth 1, Brighton 0, Everton 0, Chelsea 4, Southampton 2, Liverpool 1, Norwich 0, Sheffield United 0, Fulham 1. So let's go have a go at the lads. We are going to aggressively... I expect to see a much better showing in the second half. We can't lose to Jared Dan Bowen. We can't. I refuse. I refuse to lose to Jared Bowen. And we are going to have another shout as soon as it allows. But for now, West Ham in possession. O'Connell on the halfway line tries a ball up down this left hand side. Anderson is dispossessed though. Lorenzo plays it to Pavlovic. Nice ball up to Mora. Mora tries one over the top. 
Gaetano gets it down to David. David, nice ball over the top to Musa. Musa has space to get across in here, or will he cut inside? No, Gamblin will dispossess him, and it's with Katic on the halfway line now. Dragomir, Dragomir, through ball to Musa. Back to Gaetano. Gaetano plays it out to Selic on the wing. Selic in a nice crossing position gets it to Mora. Mora's header goes over the bar. Unfortunate. And that was a weird way of it cutting it up. It separated it for a second highlight, but there's no real gap in time. Anyways, Anderson. Anderson cutting in on this left-hand side. Lovely tackle. Pavlovic has it now. Plays it to Mora. Mora keeps the ball in. Almost knocks it out for a throw-in. Fornals, though, in possession. Plays it to Anderson. Anderson cutting in from this left-hand side. Oh, my God, Mora. Already a goal down, and we are now a man down. Thank you, Mora. I really appreciate that. So Gaetano can go out there. I guess Mahi will go on the wing. Um, Musa's not having the greatest of games. I wouldn't yeet for you. David, what would you like to do over there, David? Be an inside forward. That's probably the most useful right now. You be a pressing forward. See how that helps. If at all. Um, we have Pavlovic who's having a bad game and is tired. So, you know what? We'll rest Pavlovic for the Celtic game. At worst case, I guess. Show some passion and... Yeah, we'll leave it on just attacking for now. It's only one goal. Maybe we can steal the draw. We do have only 10 men, of course. So, going very attacking would be rather risky. In fact, it's rather risky staying on attacking. But we are going to for now. Dragomir whips one in. Back post. Gamblin gets it to Kartik. Kartik holding the ball up. Can we get the ball back in though? Selic with the ball near the halfway line. Almost give it away to Halia. Gets it back though. And he's giving it away. Selic, what on earth are you doing? Messing about with the ball on the halfway line. So, Selic has gone and thrown the game away, folks. Great. Not the way we wanted to spend our time down here in London. Looks like we're going to have a bad time here in London. So we are going very attacking because why not at this point? We may as well try and fight and get two goals back in the space of 12 minutes. It's not completely beyond us but it's very unlikely considering we have 10 men. Pizarro though plays it over to Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen cuts inside. He's got acres of space and Butlin makes a lovely save. That's the only good thing about that sequence of events. Gamblin, though, plays it to Pizarro. Pizarro into Declan Rice. Back to Pizarro. Pizarro, nice ball across to Gallardo. Gallardo now to Anderson down this left-hand flank. Will he get across in? Gets it to Gallardo, who has acres of space, to kick it into the crowd. We now have Diop coming on for West Ham. We have an anxious player, a furious player, and they're all going to be rather furious when I ever go at them. Also, that was a very unorthodox save by Butland, I must say. I don't know why he didn't just catch it. But Mahi just decides to walk past Anderson instead of actually tackling him. Declan Rice, and it is almost the 90th minute. So our pain and misery will be coming to an end. And yes, we have lost here 2-0. 27 27 shots for West Ham, 10 for us, 14 on target to our 3, 12 fouls to our 17, 3 yellow cards, 3 yellow cards, 58% possession to our 42. Hallio was their best performer with an 8.3 and 1 goal. Jack Butland was our best with 13 shots saved and a 7 rating as a result. Struggling to perform was Jared Bowen of all people. He got a 6.7 and no reason for it. Mora apparently was our West performer with a 6.2 and a 0% crossing completion ratio. Now, it's very debatable. He had a terrible game, yes. He went and got sent off and pretty much threw the game away for us. But Selic did his part in throwing the game away, I guess, as well. So, equally terrible. So, we shall aggressively, that performance has shown me that there's much work to be done. Therefore, we are training harder tomorrow. I don't care that we've got a game in like three days time. Yeah, we've got a game here on the Thursday, straight after the Saturday. But I will see you fine folks when we get Celtic in just a second.
Okay, ladies and gents, so if you haven't guessed from the dump behind me, we are, of course, here at Celtic Park. Okay, it's not quite this dump in front of me, but if I just quickly... Yeah, it's not that awful building either. That is not the ground. In fact, it's this big green blob behind. So let's head on down the road and we shall go to Celtic Park. Of course, it looks a little bit nicer when you see this lovely green side, but it's still a bit of a shed, I must say. It's not the greatest looking ground. So I shall head down here under the most sketchy looking turnstiles I've ever seen. Don't think I'd fancy going through any of these, considering they're in a tunnel. Doesn't seem like the smartest of design decisions. But we shall make our way around here to the parking, get ourselves set up nicely near what over there was the executive lounge entrance. So I would assume this is the side we will be entering. So without further ado, let's get into the match. Okay, ladies and gents, it is finally kickoff time here in Celtic Park, Glasgow, for our European Cup Group D match. And they are going for a 5 3 2. Weird approach to the game, going rather defensive, even though they are at home. And we have a pretty much unchanged lineup. So we are not going to go through them. We are simply going to pronounce that. Pearson shall be on the bench instead of Mahi. Other than that, we have no changes to the starting lineup and no other changes to the bench. So, without further ado, let's get on with this wet and rainy game. Carlos thinks we should tell the team in no uncertain terms that they must show an improvement from our last outing. And I think that is reasonable. So, assertively, um, it's all up to you. I'm expecting a win. I'm expecting. Yeah, I'm expecting to see a much better performance. Everyone's motivated, apart from Lorenzo and Pavlovic, but he's listening keenly, and Pavlovic appears to be asleep. So, Lewis Russell of 442, the enthusiastic fellow who we have a great respect for, having the best defence in the Euro Cup, must have you looking forward to another win. I mean, it kind of puts in his... Puts us in a position to draw, not necessarily win. We need to find people who can actually score, because our secondary striker is actually on a goal drought. Everything starts at the back. Our defence gives us the foundation to build upon in search of victory. So, Jonathan David is on a fairly lengthy run without scoring a goal. So he expects us to win, but he goes on about our striker not having goals in a while. Yeah, he's played well without reward. Yes, I have complete faith. How useful is Lorenzo's versatility when it comes to team selection? He's a bit of a Swiss army knife, as are most of my players, because I like everyone to be adaptable. I like, if I get an injury in a certain position, I can have about three or four different players who can cover it. So, Euro Cup gets them results up on the screen as we face... Celtic in today's fixed draw. Chelsea is also playing by Leverkusen. But Celtic off to an early start. Christie whips in the free kick. Pavlovic heads it away only as far as the edge of the area. Luckily, they can't shoot to save their life. And we have a focused Celtic. So let's demand more. See if we can counteract their focus. No, we've put pressure on two players. Although David has reacted well. So, we probably shouldn't have done that. But Dragomir in possession plays it to Palacios. Nice ball, cross field to Mora. Mora going to get a good cross in, or will he give it away? Nice cross. It's intercepted, though. Palacios has collected it, though. And we are still in possession. Lorenzo, can I get a cross in? No, plays it short to Palacios. Palacios, nice cross. David, come on. Lovely play by Palacios. And a Fantastic header into the top corner by Jonathan David. That's his fifth goal of the season. Assisted by Ezequiel Palacios. Let's have another look at that one. Whips it in and just nods it in the top corner. Not a bad little start to the game. Half an hour in. Now, a lot of them are looking frustrated, uninterested. And so they may. 
McGregor. McGregor gets it out to Ralston, is that? Dispossessed by Musa. No one cares who he is. Musa to David. David, oh, lovely save by Bane. Not the guy from Batman. That is a different Bane. But it's whipped in. Back post. Oh, come on, David. So we've figured out David can't use his feet, but get it to his head and he will nod it in. That is his sixth goal of the season, this time assisted by Gianluca Gaetano. Again, nodded into the upper corner. And we are off to a flying start. Copenhagen and Celtic are both on four points at the moment, as Copenhagen has a 1-0 lead against Dynamo Kiev. That's pretty good for us, because that means Kiev gets pushed down, as well as Celtic. And them three seem to level out, thus making it easier for us to get qualification. But it is 2-0 here at Celtic Park. They've had three shots, we've had nine. They've had one on target, we've had five. Four fouls to four. Zero yellow cards, zero yellow cards. 42% possession to 58. Their best performer is Scott Bain. Four shots saved and 6.8 as a result. Ours is Jonathan David. 8.7 and 2 goals. He's on for his hat-trick. Currently, of course, on his brace. Struggling to perform is Lee O'Connor. 6.5 and no reason for it for them. And Luca Mora. 6.5 and 0% crossing completion ratio. Latest scores. A Paul is 1-0 up against Young Boys. Basil Brush is 1-0 up against Dynamo. Chelsea is 2-1 against by Leverkusen. Of course, the Kiev game, like I said, they're 1-0 down to Copenhagen. We then have Michelin, who is 1-0 down to Atlanta. Zoya is 1-0 down to Lask. And Valencia is 2-0 up against Rosenborg. So, Carlos, thanks for telling the boys they, their efforts were excelente. As Carlos would say. Excelente. My, I'm very pleased with your performance. Keep it up, lads. We're going to go with some positivity. The lads seem a little down. Give them a bit of positivity and they shall respond in kind. Possibly. I feel my team are very unpredictable in the nature in how they will react to any sort of negative or positive forms of feedback. But it's intercepted. Oh, Palacios can't get to it. Connell, Connell screams past the post. That is a ghoul kick, and it is nice and comfortable for us. We are going to get a couple of substitutions on now. Get a couple of players rested. Musa is dead to the world. So he is coming off. We're going to give Iwan Yeet a chance to score, but we're not completely taking off David. David still has his chance to get his heart trick, because it would be rude not to let him at least attempt it. Now, Guimaraes, you can come on for Selic. We're not going to use our third substitute. We shall hold on to that this time. And we shall let things roll out. In fact, I'm going to give the lads a little bit of praise. A bit more positivity. And they loved it. Everyone's fired up. Apart from Guimaraes and I wouldn't eat. But they've only just come on. So they're obviously not taking it on board. They know I'm not on about them. Why would I be praising them? They've only just come on the pitch. Mora, Mora whips one in. Dragomir down to David. And it's a hat-trick for Jonathan David. Seventh goal of the season. Assisted by Vlad Dragomir. And it looks like we would be cruising through to the knockout rounds of the Euro Cup. Now, I don't think mathematically we will make it in this episode. But it's pretty much all sit and done at this point as you can see we're currently on eight points celtic is on four we have dynamo on six copenhagen on two and you gotta remember they've got to play each other so we're pretty much through i can guarantee pretty much that we are heading through so although i want to show you as qualifying i kind of don't see the need especially considering how congested the fixtures will be if i do it will be a case of playing like two games and then coming back so i think what we will do is come back for some league games in the next episode 
but Johnson whipped one in and it is over the bar. We of course will have a little look at the fixture lists and maybe try and figure that out after this game though. But for now it looks like we're going to have a comfortable victory here against Celtic. Nice little trip up north. Definitely went a lot better than our trip down south, that is for sure. But Celtic in possession now. Can they get a goal to make up for this terrible performance? No, Butland saves it and Pavlovic clears it away. And they may be... no. They're just going to amass some buckets. Which may not help them in future games here in Europe. But Gaetano with a free kick whips it in. Can we get a fourth? No. Celtic have got it now and are on the counter-attack. Shreve. Shreve? Shreve? I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. He's tackled though. He was tackled by Pavlovic. And his name doesn't really matter because he's not going to score. So, Celtic in possession. Nice tackle by Mora. They've won it back. Katak heads it away. And Pavlovic is on the counter-attack. Unfortunately, the ref blows his whistle. And it is 3-0. So, they had 14 shots. We had 12. 6 on target. We had 7. 8 fouls to 9. 2 yellow cards to 0. 44% possession to our 56. Billing had a 6.9 and 100% tackle completion ratio. Jonathan David, of course, was our best performer. He had a 9.5 and a hat-trick. Struggling to perform was Bolingoli with 4 mistakes and a 6.4. For us was Mora, 6.6. Now, there's a couple of milestones, of course. Saville made his 300th career appearance, and Jonathan David's free goals ended his drought. He'd gone 540 minutes prior to the match not scoring, so not a bad way to end his goal drought. Getting a heart trick against Celtic in a year But Carlos thinks to tell the boys they did well, and their efforts were excellent. Indeed, Carlos. So assertively. You know what? passionately i'm very pleased let's have a good old jolly celebration because we're going to need it when we go to our next game and get absolutely mauled by liverpool because as you can see our previous meetings against them not gone so great so let's have a little look at the fixture list shall we so we have liverpool kiev Chelsea, Celtic, Wolves. Now, it's tempting to come back for Chelsea and Celtic, but I want to definitely get the FA Cup game in. So what we'll do is the FA Cup and Fulham will be our next episode. I'm not sure when the FA Cup draw is, though. FA Cup third round draw is the 28th. So unfortunately... You're going to have to wait till the next episode to see who we get in the FA Cup. Because I still have Liverpool and the Kiev game to play before the draw. So I thank you all for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you on Thursday. Goodbye.